Good morning, loves, and welcome to Vlogmas Day 8. May all your wishes tonight come true. The love I live, the dream I knew. This Christmas, I only want to be close to you. We are getting ready to head down and have some breakfast with everyone. I made sure to like bring my lanyard and more comfortable shoes. These are so cute. These are from Express. I bought them last year and I really like them. We're so exhausted. We're tired. I only had a few hours of sleep because I stayed up editing Vlogmas. I edited two videos um, and then I'm going to upload like one. I uploaded one like around 11, which is kind of late, but then I went ahead and I uploaded the other one to be scheduled for today at 8 o'clock. So that helps out. I have my little card ready and I'm so ready to just like get some stuff, get some food in my stomach because my stomach hurts so bad for some reason. Maybe it's because I'm nervous because I have to speak today and it makes me nervous. I do have one. Yeah. I put it in. Make sure. Oh, the smoke. The smell still hasn't gone away. I don't think it's going to go away for a while, isn't it? Maybe like a week or so. Because it's so pretty strong. Look how pretty it is though. I like the entrance of that. Good morning. Good morning. Woo! One more time Thank for you. the people in the back. So these ladies have dedicated a lot of time and love and energy and wanted to be able to recognize all of them. First and foremost, I want to say a very heartfelt and genuine thank you to every single person sitting in a seat right now. Y'all get those cameras out. Is everyone awake now? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Today I want to talk to you guys about planning your best life. So if you guys don't know me, my name is Belinda Celine Villa and I go by the street name Belinda Celine. And I am a Chicago-based influencer. I'm a full-time YouTuber and I have my own sticker shop which is called Plan with Belinda. So I have worked with brands like Hewlett Packer, Cricket, um, Maker, Walmart, Vogue, Olay, and have been a brand ambassador for brands like Maybelline, Revlon, and Nordstrom. So I've worked with many brands and it's super exciting. It's a really cool thing to do. So you may be wondering, how did you get into this? Like, how is that possible to have a career on YouTube? Um, but I'm super excited to share with you guys what I've learned because I feel like the steps that I took to get where I'm at is something that you can incorporate into your daily life and eventually set your goals, plan them out, and then eventually achieve them so that you can live your best life. And you can do this by planning it out on your planners. So um, I get many questions on a daily basis on social media, on Instagram, on uh, through emails, through uh, direct messages. And they're always asking me, like, Linda, how do you make YouTube your career? How do you make a living off of it? How did you start your sticker business? Um, and what do you do to stay motivated? Because I know that's something hard to do, especially when it's a very competitive market. So I'm here today to share with you guys how to plan your best life. And I'm gonna tell you what steps I personally took and what obstacles got in my way and how I was able to overcome them. So I started my channel about six years ago. And before I started my YouTube channel, I used to work two jobs. I worked at a dry cleaners and I worked at the bus route at a restaurant. They were both very labor intensive jobs. Um, it was really hard trying to work two shifts and, and manage my life, my social life. Um, but I was trying to pay my way through college. I wanted to become either a school teacher or a radiologist. I know they're both very opposite of each other. But I wanted to do something to make my family proud. I know they risked everything and they sacrificed so much to be here in this country and I wanted to make them proud. And it's something that 
just myself, I want to make myself proud and I wanted to live my best life as well. But after two years, after going to college and saving up for a long time for me to pay cash out of my pocket, out of school tuition was just way too much and I had no choice but to drop out. And I think that was the lowest point in my life when I felt like I had no future. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with myself? I don't want to disappoint my family. Like, I worked so hard, I was a straight A student. I graduated with the honors and I have nothing to show for it because I can't put myself to school, I can't get any government funding, and I can't get any help any other way. So I was like, you know what, suck it up, buttercup. Like, you have to go ahead, start working again, make money, and try to put yourself to school again. So during that time, I think the only thing that really brought happiness to me and what inspired me was watching YouTube channels and watching different YouTubers and seeing what they do on their daily life. I love fashion, I love beauty, I love creating things. So I was always trying to do something creative, something DIY, and I was like, you know what? I get so much enjoyment out of watching these girls on YouTube. Like, I want to be able to do the same. I want to be able to have a creative outlet. I want to be able to express myself and connect with other people and just, I don't know, just be creative. So I started my YouTube channel, and <laughs> let me just tell you, I didn't want to tell anybody that I knew that I was starting a YouTube channel. I thought it was a little bit embarrassing, because I didn't know how to act in front of the camera. I didn't know how to do pretty much anything. Um, but when I first started, I had no idea what to do. I'm like, okay, so I know you put up a video online, but exactly what do you do? How do you get started? So I'm a very organized person. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna make a list. I'm gonna make a list of the things that I need in order for me to achieve my goal, which is to start the YouTube channel. So I wrote down a couple things that I knew that I needed, which can be kind of obvious. And the list was a camera. I needed to buy a camera in order to film myself. I needed to save up money in order to purchase that camera. And at that time, nobody shared their secrets. There was nowhere that you can look up of what kind of camera you should use to start a YouTube channel. There was a lot of information out there about photography and professional um, videography, but there was nothing about like something that was affordable that I could use in the comfort of my own home and be able to film myself. I also needed a computer. I just used a desktop that I had for many years. Um, and it was really old, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna work with what I got. And I also needed internet to upload my content. But at that time, we didn't have internet. We weren't able to afford um, Wi-Fi. So I would actually go to my now husband, boyfriend's house, and I would ask if I could just borrow his computer and I would upload my videos when I would um, film them. And he didn't know about it, and I would just ask him, hey, can I use your computer? And he would be suspicious, like, why? What are you doing on there? I'm like, no, it's nothing. Just, you know, I'm just looking at something. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, but of course he's really smart, so he just looked at the history of whatever I was looking up, and he watched my video, and he told me, like months later, he's like, I've known you had a YouTube channel for the longest time, I just never told you. So I was like, okay, that's cool, I guess. But um, it, was, it was a little hard to start doing it, because I never really, I mean, what do you say to yourself when you talk in front of the camera, and you don't really know what to do, you're like, um, okay, this is awkward, like looking back, at that video, it's still up by the way. My very first video is so cringy. I just, I cannot stand looking at it because I have no personality, because I was trying to be as perfect as I could be, and I just showed how to do a very simple hair tutorial. And I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna put it up, no one's gonna watch it anyway, it's gonna give me some practice, so that I could criticize myself, and then I could see what I can improve on, and then see if people would comment on it, see what they have to say. So. Your first video is the most cringiest, it's horrible, <laughs> but you learn from it. And that's, I think that's what's most important, is that you're going to make mistakes, you're going to, you know, do things that you don't think you're going to do, and then, but you could, the good thing about that is that you can eventually criticize yourself and say, okay, what can I do better? So, I did teach myself how to use Movie Maker, which was something that was really difficult for me to learn because I didn't really know much about, about the program, but eventually I did it. And when I was doing this, I had so much joy from watching videos and uploading in it. And eventually, I just got random views. I didn't know how to reach out to people to watch my videos. I didn't really understand how to go about it. But 
I think back then the algorithm of YouTube was so different. So I think if you just got recommended on people's pages and then if you watch one video, something similar would come up. And so I received some feedback. It was really awesome. I love talking to people from all across the world and just sharing my views and interacting and kind of new um, makeup. So two days before my wedding, I flew out to New York. I shot my video with Maybelline. And then after that, they wanted me to be their brand ambassador for a year. And that would include a lot of traveling, which at the time where I was working at, they couldn't accommodate all this time for me just to go out and travel. Um, so it was a really hard decision for me at that time. And I had to pick whether I should stay working where I was working, making a stable income, and just having a decent job or risk that and then go work with a brand who couldn't guarantee a stable income for me and it would just pretty much be for promotion. So on our honeymoon, Ricardo and I were talking about this and it was really hard for me to bring it up because I was gonna tell him like, hey, we're, you know, we just bought a house, like we have a lot more bills now, we have a lot more things to take care of and I was trying to I was thinking about quitting my job. And when I was talking to him, I told him that I was really scared because my entire life I've been independent. I've worked since I was 14 years old and I've never had to depend on somebody else to support me. And even though we were married and we were newlyweds, he's like, Belinda, he's like, you never have to worry about that. And I can honestly say that I married the most amazing man because he's been supportive since day one. Because he said, no matter what you choose, I will support you. That position will always be there. But this is an amazing opportunity. <laughs> and he said, this is an amazing opportunity for you. And I think that you should take the risk and concentrate on YouTube full time. Because if it makes you happy, that's all that I really want you to be, is to be happy. So I took the risk. And today I have over half a million friends across YouTube and all social media, and a lot of you guys are sitting here today, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I make videos on YouTube full time, and I get to interact with a lot of people from all over the world. And through planning and being organized, I was more concentrated on my planner and I shared it with all of you guys. And so I decided that I wanted to start a sticker business and my number one cheerleader for that is Ashley who's sitting right up front here. She motivated me every single day and every single week she would be like, Belinda, you need to start your own business. Like people love how creative you can be with your planners and you can inspire others to achieve their goals just like you did with yours. So I was like, okay, like, I'm gonna do it, but I know it's gonna be a lot of hard work. I have no idea where to begin. I have no idea what materials I need. I, don't, I have no idea how to start a business um, when it comes to retail, especially online. So um, I've always been a crafty person and my family has always been on a tight budget. So I either had to figure out how to DIY something myself if I couldn't afford it, or if it was something that I didn't see in the market that I like, I would just try and do it myself. Um, a little fun story is that in the sixth grade, I used to make friendship bracelets out of yarn. I would purchase the yarn for like 30 cents or something, and I would make a bunch of different bracelets and I would sell them to my friends in, in school, and I sold them for a dollar each, and that's how I paid for my lunch. So <laughs> I was able to buy like popcorn shrimp and like cheese fries and have like the good stuff that they have um, in school. And in high school, I also made my own blinged out phone cases. So I would buy phone cases on eBay for like $10. They were clear cases. And I would go to the dollar store and I would buy a bunch of really cheap jewelry. And then I bought the, I think it's called the E900 or E something blue. There you go, E6000. And I would buy that glue and I would decorate the phone cases and I sold those for $50 a piece. And that helped me a lot. So I've always been really crafty and I'm like, you know what, I'm definitely gonna dive into the sticker business, even though I'm so scared because there's a lot of great shops out there already who have amazing artwork and who are just so talented. But I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. So I gave myself a year to do this. I'm like, I have to be realistic with my goal. Like, you're not gonna lose 60 pounds in three months. You know, you're gonna lose it in a year or two, but you have to be realistic with your goals. So I was like, you know what, this is gonna take some time. I have to learn what materials I need. 
I need to learn um, what programs that I need to use. I need to learn like what is worth investing my money in in order for me to be productive and be able to come out with my own sticker shop. And I needed to learn how to make my own website, which all of that was new to me. So I gave myself a year, and every single month, I gave myself a very small goal. So this is how it went, pretty much. So the first month, I bought a sticker machine, and I downloaded the program. I had no idea what I was doing. I'm like, I don't know where to begin, but we're just going to buy this machine. We're going to see how it goes. And then I didn't have time for it. I'm like, I made every excuse in the book. I'm like, I'm too tired. I have my job that I have to worry about. I have my kids and family. Like, I need to attend to my husband and my dogs. So I felt like I never had time for it. But I'm like, you know what? Like, if you know that it's important to you, you're going to find the time. And if it's not that important to you, you're going to find an excuse. So then I tried to find time to learn how to use it. And I'm like, I have to be able to learn how to use the program if I want to make these stickers. So I love to work out. I feel like it relieves a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. If you can't sleep, work out. If you feel stressed out, work out. It doesn't have to be anything intense. Just walk on the treadmill for 20 minutes. Your heart rate will go up. Your blood pressure you know, will, will help your health overall. So on the treadmill, I would run for 30 minutes, and I would put on a YouTube video on a tutorial on how to make stickers. And I would watch 30 minutes every single day, maybe like three days out of the week, or four days out of the week, and I learned how to use the machine that I was using. So I found out how to make the stickers. The next month was a way for me to, um, to see what I needed to invest in. So just like going through these conferences and connecting with, with other people is the best way that you can gain knowledge because you know something that somebody else doesn't know. And you never know who you talk to. Doesn't matter how many subscribers they have. Doesn't matter how many, um, how many, um, followers they have on Instagram, it doesn't, the number doesn't matter because someone can be very valuable to you. You can make an, an amazing friendship and eventually a work partner. So I went to conventions, I started talking to other people, I introduced myself, and I asked them about themselves because I want to know what they were doing because I'm interested in to see like what other people are doing as well. And I truly believe in supporting each other as women. And I see a lot of women in this room, sorry for the men, but I see a lot of women in this room and I see a lot of women who are all about women empowerment, and I, I take that very seriously. So I always support any business, especially small businesses. So I went to these conferences and I learned a lot, and eventually I was able to open up my sticker shop a year later. And right now, I feel like it's been very successful, but it's getting to the point where it's getting out of hand and I can't do it all by myself. I have my assistant who helps me all the time, but I want to do something bigger. So I'm giving myself some time to be able to do something bigger than that. But the message that I want to share with you guys today is that this conference is not about pens and papers or stickers or washi. It's about giving you the tools for you to plan your best life so that you can work towards your goals and eventually achieve them. Thank you. Oh my gosh, was looking a little wonky there for a second. We are back at the hotel room. Um, all of my jitters went away now that I already went up on stage. And it was my very first time speaking on stage by myself as a speaker and not like on a panel with a bunch of other girls. So that was very nerve wracking. I was, this is, I think that was the most nervous I've ever been in my entire life, which is so weird. Um, but a lot of people liked it and a lot of people came up to me and said thank you. And they said that they, um, that whatever I had to say was really inspiring. So that meant the world to me. So thank you so much. Um, now we're back in our room and we're just going to relax for a little bit until the nighttime session starts, which is going to be, um... A plan with me with Maria from two little bees and then we're going to play bingo um there's another speaker which I don't remember it's going to be uh, travelers notebook setup with Jasenia the planner sophisticate which I'm excited because um, I'm starting to get into travelers notebooks a lot more often now 
um, ever since I got like the new Erin Condren books. I also bought some stuff from Teresa Collins. Her speech was amazing. She did such a great job and I feel like I learned so much more about her and she's just so sweet. Like it was it was really awesome everything that she said like I loved everything that she said um so these are a couple of things that I bought from her vendor shop and this is like just a monthly planner then we got some really cute notebooks look how cute these are look 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 at the patterns like these are totally me right there and I like the floral one and then we have like the ballerina those are like little travelers notebooks is that what that is and then I also purchased a shirt from her shop because it was so cute. And it says, Mas amor, por favor. And it's black and white. I love it. Love everything about it. Um, What else did I buy? I bought a couple more things, actually. I don't remember everything. Yeah, so, oh my god, our swag is so cute. Look at that. Look at this bag. Isn't this adorable? We got matching PJs on. <laughs> She's got PJs! <laughs> Okay, <laughs> love it. We've got magic woo, woo. Look what we got when we went to the a mall. We got some little hair bows, which I think they're so cute from Charlotte Bruce, right? You can see it because of my blonde hair. You see it? You see it on the back a lot. Yes, we got little matching bows, which I think is so cute. I found these at Target. No, yeah, Target. Are we going the right way? That's funny. I'm gonna get our drinks. I want some wine. I think there's like a cookie thing that you could do too, right? Right now, everyone's in their PJs. We are back. Oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. It is one in the morning. The event ended at like one, or not one, at like 12, and then just like talking to everybody and saying goodbye took like an hour i came in here look at the bags underneath my eyes it looks really bad i like stripped off my lashes i put my hair down because i have like the biggest headache ever so our flight leaves super early in the morning i booked it to, so that we can have like a full day when we get back home because usually it's like a full day of traveling and it kind of takes up your whole day so we're like you know what let's just kind of go super early in the morning and then we'll have all of Sunday which we can rest at home you know and not have the anticipation of having to catch a flight while you walk by <laughs> I was trying to run by you look cute though uh, you look so I'm cute like, you my ponytail I'll be like <laughs> yeah I love the little things that we got for the ponytail like they're su seriously like super cute the good thing is that we're comfortably in our PJs, um, but I'm going to jump in the shower. I feel so gross. Like, I feel like I've had my makeup on since literally 6 a.m. this morning, and I've had to, like, retouch it multiple times, and I just feel like I have caked makeup on, and Ashley's like, I think I'm getting a pimple. I'm like, girl, I think I'm getting some, too. Look at that over here. So... Let's just wash off the makeup, take a shower, get ready to leave for the airport. We're going to pack. Um, we're hungry, but I think we're just going to suck it up and wait till we get to the airport. Because um, we still have an hour ride back. <laughs> that sucks. We have an uh, we're an hour away from the airport. That's going to be a super expensive taxi ride. Because I honestly, I don't think I would do an Uber this late. It's just safer to do a taxi do we, and we, just suck it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would rather be safe than sorry. We definitely need to figure it out. I think we're just going to get a taxi. That would be the best thing for us to do. You know what I'm saying? Next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um... Yeah, so I'm just going to jump in the shower. So this is where I'm going to leave you guys off. It was such a fun event. It was so long. I felt like I didn't know when to vlog. Like, I tried vlogging here and there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys have been enjoying Vlogmas. These are just very chill, daily life. Um, next weekend, we're going to Disneyland, so I'm excited for those. But Recorder doesn't like being in my vlog, so wish me luck. <laughs> um, but that is everything, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Muchas besos. Mwah.